We anticipate the entrance of Andrew Galata. A long and distracting day for Galata. We're told that between noon and 4 p.m. today, Galata was constantly engaged in the discussion as to whether he should fight or back out because of his having felt jobbed by the switch from 10 rounds to 12 rounds for the length of this fight. Eventually, he decided to go ahead with it, but his people are worried about the toll this may have taken on him today. Uh, and, and I think this is part of a, what I would call a, a still amateur attitude, George, that inhabits this longtime amateur that he didn't understand that, hey, the show must go on if you are a pro. Correct. All right. Of course, at the end of the day, money talked, and Galata winds up with $650,000 instead of the initially agreed upon $600,000 to enter the ring against Bo. And there's the record. 28 wins, 25 KOs against relatively light opposition compared to the kind of men who have faced his opponent tonight. And Riddick Bowe makes his way into the ring. One unusual circumstance as you look at the gloves on Bowe's hands. They're by a brand new glove maker named Grant. And tonight, Bowe is wearing these new Grant manufactured gloves, while his opponent, Galata, is wearing the more traditional and recognized Reyes gloves. Harold Letterman says to us, Larry Merchant, that in 30 years, he's never seen a fight in which two fighters wore opposite sets of gloves. There's always something, Jim. <laughs> George, you ever seen this before? First time. In the amateurs, you see a lot of strange things, but generally, big heavyweight fights, you, you got to get a little more coordinated. from Brownsville in Brooklyn. Same section of that borough that produced Mike Tyson. In the past, Tyson has always been the winner in the who's more of a Brownsville home product sweepstakes than Bo. But tonight, Bo gets a rousing reception as he enters the ring. The record, 38 wins, one loss, 32 KOs. There was a 40th fight, which was the no contest against Buster Mathis Jr., not listed in that record there. Alleged attendance for the fight tonight, 11,252. Certainly it sounds like that many as we get ready. And now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the free fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to New York City's Madison Square Garden, where tonight, Spencer Promotions, main events, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This buds for you. Present the real world heavyweight championship 12 rounds of boxing sanctioned by the new york state athletic commission chairman former two-time heavyweight champion of the world floyd patterson first executive assistant tony russo deputy commissioner in charge michael pascal commissioners at ringside mel southard and rose trentman our three physicians at ringside are dr rufus sadler dr bill lathan and Dr. Gerald Gulata. The timekeeper at the bell is Jim Borzell. And the three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be George Colon, Luis Rivera, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Wayne Kelly. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance here at Madison Square Garden, and the millions watching around the world. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with red. He comes into the ring with a perfect professional record of 28 victories without a loss. And 25 of that victory total have been knockout victims. This native of Warsaw, Poland, now lives and fights out of the windy city of Chicago, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the undefeated pride of Poland. Here is Andrew Gould.
and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trim with red letters. He's a 1988 Olympic silver medalist and returns tonight to his hometown. As a professional, he has captured three world heavyweight title belts with a record of 38 victories, only one defeat, and he has stopped 32 opponents by knockout. He is considered by most experts to be the best heavyweight in the division today. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the last man to hold the undisputed heavyweight crown from Brooklyn, New York, the people's champion, three-time heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Big Daddy. a lot of whether he thought he could take Riddick Bowe's punch. He said sweetly and succinctly, I have to. Let's see if he can, because that's going to tell us what kind of fight we have. Well, he's never been down in his professional career. He was stopped only once in his amateur career, and that was on a cut at the Olympics. You see those tattoos on Riddick Bowe's chest and back uh, in honor of his children, his wife, Judy, there's even a face of Riddick on there with a little caption that says Big Daddy. <laughs> Round one begins. Lou Duva promised us that Galata would not be the standard straight-up Eastern European fighter, that we would see head movement and bending from the waist and a more fluid boxer puncher style. And certainly Andrew's trying to affect that from the beginning. Bo takes his time. Wants to get a good look at Galata before he begins to step it up with the jab. Right, what about step back, step back. Almost 500 pounds of heavyweight in there. And the big question early, as Larry pointed out, can Andrew Galata take Riddick Bowe's punch? Hasn't been in with anybody like this, so the first time Bo unloads the right cross, We'll try to get a look at how well Galata can handle it. Rudy Bowe wants to keep this, keep this a nice boxing match. Get the other guy, make him an amateur. Now, Galata, he needs to rough it up, get dirty, and make it a free-for-all. That's the only way he can become a free-for-all. Galata throws and lands the first right hand of the bout. So far, it's been all left hands except for that one punch. with an overhand right. Galata has been matching Big Riddick jab for jab. But as long as it maintains a jab match, Riddick Bowe is going to stay in control because he has the more experience. If Galata gets in there and starts making it rough, then Bowe is going to be out of his house. Galata throwing more punches early. Galata delivers the first body punch, misses a right hand. Bowe now backs Galata up with a jab, and Galata misses over the top with a wild right. Bo stepping inside and gets hit with the left hook for his trouble. Holyfield was able to land the left hook with stunning regularity against Bo. Now Galata is just short with another right hand, but it caught a piece of Riddick's stuff. Bo has started, has started slowly in the past, but right now Galata has dictated what's happened here in the first round. And, and Bo may be surprised, Jim, that a guy is out jabbing him. Now Bo lands the left, but feints and holds back the right hand. Now a quick combination inside by Riddick. He seems to shed a little of the eight months' worth of ring rust, but Galata comes back with a combination of his own. Riddick Bo told him Galata to come on, and he didn't. He should have. He hit him with a three-punch combination there, George. Thank you. 
good combination against the right. young. Keep doing what you're doing. And don't get lazy on the inside, goddammit. When he comes inside and grabs you, you, you got down. to move your hands. Bend your down. knees, move your hands. Give him the shoulder, get on the inside, and you punch. Hey, the they may have ignored Galata before the, 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 the fight. They can't hey, ignore him after that right round. But it's only one it's round. The main voice in Galata's corner was Roger Bloodworth. Rest assured, you'll hear more of Lou Duba as the bout goes on. 84-year-old Eddie Fletch declined to wear a radio frequency microphone for us tonight, so what we get out of Bo's corner is more on the catch as catch can level. In round one, Galata threw 24 more punches than Bo. Now Bo traps Galata in a corner, but the big man gets away. Well, Galata, it's to his advantage if he keeps this thing all mixed up. And now Wayne Kelly is warning Bo about holding and hitting. Took that overhand right and seemed to shrug it off. It hurt him a little bit. I think, and it wasn't because it was fairly thrown either. It was behind the ear a little bit. This bow keeps his left jab working. It's no contact. But if he gets out there slugging and roughing it up, the line can win this fight and win it big. Bow lands a hard left hand inside. Good short left hook. Comes back with the right. The line lands a left hook. And the line matches punch for a punch against Bo. A lot of going downstairs. Might have been a little below the waistline. Kelly's watching upstairs to see if Bo holds and hits. Now Kelly comes back and tells Galata to keep him up. Galata's doing a real good job of going to the body. Really Bo has got a little flesh down there. He should take advantage of it. The fight may go 12 rounds. You get in your body punches to your advantage. Both men landing inside before they step away and create distance again. Bo reaching with the left jab. Galata certainly willing to jab with the big man so far. Bo's been most successful with the taller fighters because he's never learned to throw that right hand straight. It's always overhand right. He's the only fighter that never developed his skill to the fullest potential. Good left hook by Bo. Galata comes back with a series of body punches. Bo's landed a couple of heavy shots in this round. And there's another one as he gets the left hook in inside. Galata's dropping the right hand and creating opportunities for Bo's left. But now here comes the Polish star again. Pretty fast pace in this second round. Crowd lights up as Galata lands a combo. Bo's wobble. Boy, these are big guys laying some big stuff on each other. Uh, the only thing that Rudick Bo has been in these kind of fights before, Galata, this is new territory to get in and mix it up with guys who can be there for two or three rounds more doing the same. He's proven he can take a punch, George, but you don't want to take too many of those. Not at all. How many would he take? And while you say Bo has been in wars like this, been in a war like this against a guy as big as the line. That's the way to fight. You, the mouth, you can't get lazy on the inside. Shut up, Sam. You can't get lazy on the inside. You understand me? You have to fucking keep them hands up on the inside and keep punching with this bastard. He's sucking wind already. And when you step that jab in, you snap the jab in. Andrew, Don't play with it. We're watching it. Andrew, this guy is tired. Early in this round, Bo went to try to be a brawler after finding that his opponent could jab with him in the first round. And then later you saw, you saw what you're seeing there, that Galata took a left hand and came back and dished out some of his own. Well, in the first round, Galata threw 69 punches. In the second round, he threw 77. So Galata is putting out a lot of work so far. Bo stepped up his punch count round two to 68. That was a very high work rate for both heavyweights in round two. Now they go to the third of a scheduled 12. This big guy, Galata, is a good athlete, and he is a tough customer. I hadn't seen too many right hands as quick as Bo's, and Riddick just landed a right cross. 
But again, Galata appears clear-headed as they go about the work in the first minute of round two. They must feel that Galata is dropping his left because of all of those big rights that Bo is throwing. I think he drops both the left and the right. What do you say, George? Oh, I just see Rick Bo is turning this into the kind of fight that he's needing not had to with his experience and left jab. It's all turning for Galata. It's all working for Galata because this is the fight he needed. We used to say he was the best school big man we ever saw. I never said that. Well, I did. No. And, never and he has gone out of school yeah. in his last few fights. He's never been able to throw a straight right hand, and because of that, he misses a lot of overhand rolls. Why would he slip into brawling with Galata? Is it impatience, George? Well, he want to get a knockout. He feels that this guy is underrated. I mean, beneath him, he's underestimated. Now he's going to have to fight it out for 12 rounds. You had to guess right now you think the fight might go the distance, huh, George? It looks like it to me because Galata has landed good body punches early on to take some of the steam out of would-be heavy punches for Rick Bowen the round. You wonder if Galata will remember to keep going to the body as the fight progresses. No question there's an opportunity there for him if he can remember to keep doing it. Rick Bowen can use that left jab. It's no contest. But if he stands back and waits to mix it up, it's a fight. Slowing in round three. A lot of comes out of the clinch with a left hook. Bo landing with a right and a left himself. A lot of turns Bo's head with a left hand. And when they're doing this, they're not standing at distance and boxing each other, which is what would be good for no, Bo. Galata is not able to continue round after round with that kind of experience oh, fighting. Galata with a solid low blow. Wayne Kelly stops and warns him, no point deducted so far. He and said the next time he would take a point. Yeah, that was the second warning for low blows, so the next time would make sense. Bo missing with the left hook. Galata looks very calm in there as round three comes to a close. Certainly not overwhelmed by the occasion, at least not so far. Bo slapping and trying to land a right. Galata blocked that one and rinsed Bo's head around. That was a right to the stomach, followed by a big left hook. Ah! Folks, we've got a fight. fighter coming back from a right hand with his own good right hand and a big left hand. All right, second Did you say he pull-axed him there, uh, Jim? No, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to, Larry, you know, have at it. Galata's punch output dropped considerably Good in job. round three after throwing 70 punches around in the first two. He was down to 49 in round three. But Bo was taking a bit of a rest, too. Round four begins. Now, if Rudy Gord, Bo is going to fight it out with Galata, he's got to keep fighting. He can't get him in the breathing room and hope that he, he tries to pace himself. So you're no, you don't longer think that he has to jab with him? Well, he's, or, he's already deserted that tactic. Now he's going to have to fight it out with him. Fight it out every round, though. So this is going to then come down to conditioning and stamina. That's right. And Rick Bo has found out probably I'm a little tired. But I've been knocked down before. I got up. I can take it. What a fascinating turn of events it might be if we get to those 11th and 12th rounds that the Bo camp insisted on and he's the one who's at a disadvantage because of conditioning. A good straight right hand in that exchange by Galata. Galata's already shown that he's in good shape. And shown that he can fight a little bit too, right, George? He is not backing down from Riddick Bow, and who is a good puncher, good fighter. As a matter of fact, he's trying to take the initiative from time to time. There's a right 
Martin, the left inside by Galata. Bo landed some heavy punches earlier in the round. Now it's Galata who is doing the damage. And, and Bo caught an awful lot of left hooks from Holyfield. And remember that Lou Luba was Holyfield's co-trainer for many years, and he's looking to catch him with that left hook again. Hard left, hard right. Bo waddles into the corner. Galata goes in to look and see how much more he can do. Bo is unable to stop Andrew Galata's left hook. Galata just missed with a left that might have done some serious hurt. Bo trying to jab his way out of a crisis here. And now the champion seems to have regained his legs. Is Galata doing enough, George? Galata just doesn't have enough confidence to know that he has the fight in control. If only he can now point his jab and be a little more accurate with his right hand, he can get himself a knockout. He looks like he's breathing hard inside. It takes a lot of confidence to put out that much punching power and continue to do it. He saw Galata measure both for the right hand and then missed it. Another low blow. This is a bad one. And Wayne oh, Kelly oh, is going to have to give Bo a timeout. Five. And there's the tee for the one timeout. Point. There's a point deducted point. from each of the three scorecards. Point. That point goes against Galata. This was minutes. a bad low blow foul. Greg, you got five minutes. And it's bad because he's virtually up, won the round with 19 seconds left in the round. And now it's going to be an even now. round. Well, and it's okay. terrible for Galata because he's been in control of the fight. Took a point delay. But it doesn't do okay, both much good either, I gotta tell you. <laughs> there it is. George, can Bo come back from that? Well, Bo never should have laid all the way down like that. You lay down like that and you give the other guy confidence that he never dreamed he would have had in this boxing match. Quickly, let's turn to our official rules guru, Harold Letterman. What's Ready, up here, Harold? Five Jim, minutes, right? Five minutes, exactly. Riddick Bo can take us up to five minutes to continue in this fight. Ready, ready. If he doesn't continue ready, after ready, five ready. minutes, he loses. He cannot win the fight on a foul. I think he'll take the full five minutes. Why shouldn't he? Well, if I'm Eddie Plutz, I'm yelling at him to take the full five ready minutes. Ready to go? Uh -huh. Ready now. Don't know what Riddick is thinking. Andrew. Wayne Kelly conferring with both fighters. Time in. And now Riddick's ready to go. He did not take the full five. He didn't take anywhere close to it. So Bo, perhaps not wanting to give Galata any more confidence, steps back up after what appeared to me to be less than three minutes of his allotted five. Time. Two things are happening in this play. fight. One, Galata is beating Bo to the jab. And two, he has proven so far that he can handle the pressure. This is how Galata hurt Bo within the rules with those kind of punches. And that one especially, that wobbled Bo. All the talk before the fight, George, about how slow Galata was. I don't see dropped, that. Jab, I've never seen that. Really that. I thought for a big man, hands, he right. had reasonably fast hands. What do you think about his quickness with his hands? Hey, Rick Bo is just not in shape. That's all there is to it. From the opening bell, this guy has not been in shape. He underestimated this fighter, this fighter, and he's getting he's getting whipped. He made it abundantly clear yesterday when he sat down in our meeting and wanted to talk about Tyson and Lewis and didn't much want to talk about this guy. Harold Letterman, how do you have it so far? Jim, 2-1, one, one even, 38, 37, Andrew Galata. Uh, like Larry said, Galata had that fourth round one. He hit him low. He loses a point that becomes 9 to 9 instead of 10 9 Galata, and that kept it a little closer. But I want to tell you something. Andrew Galata was landing low blows in rounds 2, 3, and 4 constantly. And I'll tell you, I'm glad he lost the point. He deserves to lose a point. He's really whacking him low, but he's fighting a good fight. Yep. You're now, Larry right. mentioned about the hand speed of Galata. This guy's been in the camp with Lou Duva, the Holyfield type combinations. His hands were always fast, as you mentioned. 
fast hands, a lot faster than you would imagine. And he came in here with the expressed intention of fighting what was the Holyfield fight plan against Bo in their first fight. Box, stay at range, move from side to side. Well, obviously, that's not going to be Galata's style over 12 rounds. He's going to have to brawl, and he's getting it done. And he's acting more as a, more like the experience fight. He gives Bo his shoulders when they're in close, doesn't give him a good shot. Oh, he just step. landed a dynamite combination, left and right. Bo handled this one, but Galata is the man who is landing the showy punches here. Bo is starting to go down below the belt a little bit, too, there. and Bo's able to establish an initiative. Galata's punch count in round four was back up to 76. He's been the busier man. Bo trying to come back from having been on the canvas after a low blow in round four. Well, one good thing Galata is doing inside by turning his shoulder is he's not allowing Bo to throw that great uppercut inside that we've seen him do in the past. He's giving him that shoulder every time he's side of him. Not open for that uppercut. So Bo make a half-hearted effort to the right uppercut. Galata rocks him back with the right hand. Bo steps up against the ropes. Galata rocks him again with the right hand. And the left. And another left up top. And the crowd is ooing and on at the work that's being done on Riddick Bo by Andrew Galata. Lewis came in here with a big showcase against Ray Mercer and barely escaped with a decision. Right now, Bo's in pretty much the same position that Lewis found himself in through most of that fight. A big round for the line. Maintaining his poise, he's not overextending himself. He's staying in good punching position. He looks like a pro right now. And through five rounds, Galata has landed 45% of his jabs to Bo's 21%. Galata is throwing more jabs and landing more, as well as doing more damage with power punches. So I'm, far, it's been his fight. I'm starting to think now about that 12 rounds. I'm telling you, <laughs> that decision could come back to haunt the Bow people in a big way. But he may need those extra rounds, Jim. Well, they, they might have seen it as two extra chances to knock Galata out if Galata tires in the middle portion of the fight, as they expect him to do. So we'll be watching Galata's punch count to see if it goes down after round six. And here we are in the sixth stanza right here. What does Bo do now, George? Well, you know, Galata was really smart in the first couple of rounds. He went down to the body to ensure himself if this fight goes beyond uh, in the latter rounds, Bo will not have the power. Now, Bo is trying to get a knockout. He shouldn't do that. He can still pull it out on points and be a little cautious. Has to go back to basics, and right now he is. Bo trying to reestablish his jab here in the sixth. Once again, they get in close, and Bo not able to launch those uppercuts, which have so defined the best of Riddick Bo in his three battles with Holyfield. The problem has been Bo has not quite measured the distance when he moved away from Galati's left jab. He thinks he's out of the way, but Galati catches him anyway. Well, that extra reach. It's that extra reach, isn't it? And Bo's not accustomed to being in with a guy who's got a bit that of That extra reach. reach has paid off good dividends for Galati. No stiff in there. He's an athlete. I, th I thought that Bo might have been wobbled a little bit by that left hook. He was. 
Riddick's punch out goes down as we get past the midpoint of the round. Brown tried to lift Riddick with a chant of let's go Bo. Galata has taken a little bit of a rest in this round, but still giving a good account of himself. Punch by punch as he goes along. And Bo seems to take one step out of the way. He should take his feet along with him. Otherwise, his body is right there for this Galata to hit him. Galata lands another left hook inside. Bo tries to come over the top with the right and misses. Galata goes back to the body. He's done too little of that in this round. Galata starting to fall in love with his ability to hammer Bo up top. And now another low blow. And let's see if Wayne Kelly takes another point. That's the second point deducted from the scorecards against Galata. Is that clear? Don't do it again. Time. Redick, so Redick. now Bo with his second time Redick, out of the here. fight due to low blows. Redick. And Galata has lost a second here, point. And Harold, what comes next? Jim, the thing that comes next without question is a disqualification. I mean, I don't know how much of this Wayne Kelly's going to put up with. Andrew Galata has been whacking him low the entire fight. He's taken two points. I don't think he'll take three. I think if Andrew Galata hits him low again flagrantly, Wayne Kelly throws him out. And you have to assume that that's what Kelly was telling Galata moments ago in that neutral corner. Here's the low blow. You know, it's obviously not deliberate, but that doesn't make any difference. All right, once again, Riddick's got five minutes. Should he take the whole five, George? Uh, you know, I wouldn't give this guy any extra courage. Hey, he hurt, hit me below the belt. The Peter Rabbit punch, go right back and fight back. Quick. That hook by Galata reestablishes his authority as soon as they go back together. And we've reached the midpoint of the fight. But I'll tell you, Riddick Bo is taking a beating. Whether it's legal or illegal, one way or another, he's getting hit a lot of punches from, the, from his knees to his head. You gotta walk, you gotta move the head when you try. You gotta move the head, cause you're standing right in front of him and all he's got to do is punch, okay? Okay, Bo? You gotta fix his tape, both tape. Somebody gotta take care of the tape, uh, Red Explosion here. He's coming off. No, you gotta do better than that. Wait, 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 you worry about the fighting. I took two points off him, okay? All right, well, just you take care of your business, all right? It almost sounded there like Riddick Bo was looking for a disqualification. Second down, step down. A stunned crowd. Here at Madison Square Garden. They are near oh, silence as the seventh round here. begins. It's Obviously, up. it's a heavily pro bow crowd, and now Galata goes to a neutral corner as Kelly okay, once again gives bow time out. Time in this time, beginning of the seventh round. Riddick said to us the other day, why don't I have to train so hard to fight a bump? He's finding out right now. Not only that, he's finding out how it feels to be hit below the belt. And he's done a lot of that in his career. That's right. This is not exactly the world's cleanest fighter in there getting hit below the belt. He's had his own fouls. Bo tentatively trying to establish something. Galata just keeps beating him to the punch. Now Bo goes back to the jab, but he's tasted so many power punches, George, and he's not aggressive enough to step in there hard anymore. And he can't seem to take one of uh, Galata's double jab. As soon as he double jabs it, Bo stands still. Galata right on the belt line with that right hand, and Kelly was watching all the way. There's a left right on the belt line. Galata's going to have to be careful about this stuff. Bo landed an uppercut, finally. One point. Is he taking a third point for low blows? That is the third time that he's deducted a point for low blows. So now, I've never seen that I haven't even before, and we're only in the seventh round. And now he's going to talk to Bo about holding and hitting. And that was the second time in the fight that Bo did that. Now the tape is coming loose on Galato's glove. Uh, there was another one of those body punches right on the belt line. Galata is flirting with disqualification here in a fight that he seems to be winning big against the guy called by many the best heavyweight active in the division. 
giant right hand over the top by Galata again. All because Rudy Boy is standing still, underestimating the reach, yep. not miscalculating how long this guy's arms are. I heard him in Bo's corner saying you can't stand right in front of him, but he keeps standing right in front of him, and he keeps paying the price. And Galata loaded a right hand up there and looked for a one-punch knockout and just missed. Whenever Galata throws the combination, the thing is going good for him. He's just hammering Bo in close. Just hammering it. That was another low blow. Yeah, Down goes Bo, and that's it. That's it. Great. It's a disqualification. That's, it's time for someone to understand that you're going to have to keep the rules in this business. And now there's a fight in the ring that's been started by some of Bo's handlers who went after Lou Duba, and somebody's going to get hurt in there. Somebody's going to get hurt. And there are more people trying to go in. And so don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. They'll stop it. Don't. Uh, get back. Go back where you'll see the talk. Get on back. That way. My microphone got knocked off my head. Don't do it, son. Don't do There's that. There's danger all over the place here. This is a very desperate situation. Lou Duva's in trouble. Lou Duva's in trouble on the ring mat. Duva's down and hurt. Do They're lifting Duva out in the ring. They're going to cool it out. Duva trying to help his dad. This is it's just an awful looking right. situation right. in there. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait a minute. It'll be okay. George Foreman. George Foreman trying to be the peacemaker. Do what are you doing? Do hey, what are you doing, guys? Fight. What are you gonna accomplish look, in there? Look, look. Now the Captain fight has friend. the fight has spread off the ring mat. George Foreman doing his best to stop it. Two more guys going into the ring. of Lou Duva, who appeared to be in extremely, extremely dire physical straits. He was taken away on a stretcher. In fact, Duva's, Duva's being taken out on a gurney right now, and we hope that they can get it through the crowd. And it appears to us that Lou is moving his head. Yes, in fact, he's lifting his head up off the gurney, so he's obviously conscious. That's a very good sign. If you follow boxing, you know that Lou has had coronary difficulties within the past year. It's of extreme importance to his life. 
that they get him out of there. We're told that police are being knocked down at ringside and that police have been thrown out of the ring by some of the thugs who are in there conducting this ongoing riot. It happened right in front of us on our side of the ring and it appeared to begin when somebody raced across the ring from Bo's corner area into the Galata corner area, apparently for the purpose of attacking Galata after the last low blow and the disqualification. And now the riot has spread to the far side of the ring. And I see some people who are jumping on top of people at ringside and beating people with chairs. Larry, what do you see down there? Well, I, I don't see anything except a lot of energy, bodies being thrown around, people watching, trying to see what's, you know, who the, these la last of the hooligans are who insist on imposing themselves on what is supposed to be organized mayhem. We have disorganized mayhem in the ring at this moment. Yeah. And well, this kind of scene took place after the first Bo Holyfield fight as well. And maybe it's just a coincidence that the same fighter was involved, but it's a black mark on the sport. This has been an extremely ugly scene so far, and it continues at ringside, where now the riot has moved down to floor level. Now we're told that Riddick Bo is still a part of that crowd down there, and they're trying to escort Bo to the locker room, and they've gotten him into the tunnel area. There's a melee of people surrounding Riddick, and now he's into the tunnel area and out of harm's way. Where's Galata? Does anybody know where Galata is? As I can't see Galata at all. I don't, you know, I'm basically I'm standing here and watching like everybody else and, and seeing about 10% of what really is going on. I, I find myself wondering what Riddick Bo was doing down in there. Galata was smart enough to get out of here, although I assume he was the target of some of these angry Bo fans. Uh, but they ought to be, I don't know, thankful for what happened because Bo looked like he was on his way George Foreman. Uh, to losing his, to losing the fight, to losing his uh, stature and status in prize fighting up until the time that Galata just couldn't control that left hand, George. And I think it was really an accident. He just, he's fighting a taller guy. He's not accustomed to it. His waist has went real high. It wasn't intentional. And he's winning the fight. There are a lot of people upset about the, the way that thing went. And I'm sorry they have to show off like this. Well, I'll Luke tell you. Duba's a nice man. He shouldn't have to. Uh, hey, George. Be hurting the, yes. I want to thank you for helping to keep us safe. Uh, obviously, our viewers didn't see it, but George Foreman protected Larry Merchant and me from a lot of harm there at ringside. He kept at least two or three guys out of the ring by himself, and I pin a big medal of honor on George tonight. He did a big service for Larry and me and the rest around us at ringside, and for a lot of people who were over on our side of the ring. Thank you, George for your forceful and honorable presence tonight. The only thing I know that may have been comparable, but in a different situation, and it's flaring up again now behind us, another riot. Guys jumping and over these chairs. Riots and fights are breaking out at ringside with no police in sight. Impossible to imagine what's gonna be done to restore order here, but right now there are no police in sight as Young men of all descriptions go hard against each other at ringside. Well, in case you've just joined us, you're looking at the aftermath of an explosive and all too right. unfortunately explosive event. Jim, Jim, Square I'm Garden. with Roger Bloodworth, who is the trainer right, Larry, go ahead. Andrew Galata. Roger, how did this start? I think it started with an unintentional low blow. Uh, Andrew has a habit of looping his punches. And Bo kept pulling his head down. Uh, he hit Andrew behind the head three or four times. Hit him a couple times low. It was only one, one time. Uh, I think they got scared but, because but, Bo was getting hurt. But your fighter clearly was in the wrong for landing so many low blows. Don't you agree? Bo was in the wrong, too, for landing behind the head and landing low blows. I'm not going to argue who started it. I'm not saying it's right. It happened, but this is a disgrace. What happened with Lou? Was he hit, or, or sure. just, or was it his heart? He was hit, but, but he grabbed his chest. Uh, in one round, he did. In the second round, and I told him, you know, not to come up anymore. 
because I didn't know whether it was his heart or if somebody had thrown something or what it was, but I didn't want him up in the ring anymore because I didn't want him to get, get hurt. All right, other than this, how, what do you think of Galata's performance? What was he doing in there that frustrated well, I think both. he was hitting him, you know? He has a good jab, he's got good power. Uh, he clearly rocked Bo two or three times, had him going. And uh, I think everything he was doing was frustrating. I think that's why Bo, you know, I'm not saying he didn't get hit low, but I think he put on a little bit of an act. Uh, he could have got up. All right, thank you very much.